Squire from Nanaimo, British Columbia. 20 years of age, driving to the store to fetch the milk, skids on black ice, his car crashes. His neck is broken. He lives the last 40 months of his life a respirator-dependent quadriplegic. Until very recently, people in Neil's dilemma simply died of their injuries. Now medicine saves these lives, but saved for what purpose? Is dignity retrievable in this paralysis? With minds that work perfectly and bodies racked and shattered, the challenge is obvious, and it is not a medical problem. How can these people be relieved of total dependence on others? Can the thousands of Canadians in Neil Squire's position achieve mental stimulation and again become vital thinking and communicating human beings? What are you, what are you thinking of? Well, possibly accounting. Uh, it's not going to be phys ed. Volunteers with the Neil Squire Foundation have created the Computer Comfort Program, a unique solution to the individual needs of people like Neil Squire. The solution is the computer. Instructors provide familiarization with operating the device. The Neil Squire Foundation creates tailor-made switches to liberate the disabled. Switches that can be manipulated by shaky hands, by head or even eyebrow movements, light flickers, or as in Neil's case, by a sip or puff, a dot or a dash, Morse code, tiny but significant keys to expression and liberation. Each system needs to be specially adapted to the user. The commercial imperatives of private research and development cannot afford to build these. There is no mass market. The severely physically disabled are not a major consumer group. Bill Cameron is a robotics engineer at the University of British Columbia. He founded the Neil Squire Foundation. Well, industry isn't really interested in the equipment for the disabled because they look at it as being a very small market without much money. Uh, the actual fact is that the seriously disabled adult is generally on welfare and doesn't have any money, and the agencies and governments involved uh, generally aren't providing uh, really any money for their well-being after they've uh, kept them alive. We're not looking for leading-edge technology. We're looking for taking existing technology and just repackaging it a little bit so it can be made useful for the disabled person. This repackaging is working now for over 600 disabled people all across Canada. Candidates for computer comfort are by no means restricted to young adults like Neil Squire. May Dang suffers from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease. I was diagnosed in 1973. Most people can't even pronounce the disease I have, let alone know what it is. I don't indulge myself in heroic sayings such as, why me? Or in futile sayings such as, what did I do to deserve this? Or is God punishing me? Or why now? The fact remains that I have this disease, and as it progresses, I have to cope with and adjust to it. If other people fail to recognize this, then I will go the route alone. Stephen Hawking, a brilliant physicist at Cambridge University, says it so eloquently. If one is physically disabled, one cannot afford to be psychologically disabled as well. He is still lecturing from his wheelchair and having his assistants repeat his words and write his equations. His illness? Lou Gehrig's disease. Whether healthy or not, we all march to the tune of a different drummer. There is definitely a stigma attached to being nonverbal. People automatically think one is deaf, dumb, and mute. Although it is not intentional on their part, they speak loudly and enunciate words dramatically in the hope that I could lip read. Sometimes people will spell words out on my word board. Not being able to speak, one facet of my personality, my wit and humor remains anonymous. Telling a joke on an alphabet board loses all the oomph. I press a switch with my forefinger. A light scans horizontally. With a quick touch, the letter is typed. Since I have limited movement, we tried many, many switches before we found one which was suitable. It took me 47 minutes to type two paragraphs, and although it is time-consuming, tiresome and cumbersome, I couldn't do without it. In my estimation, and I say this without reservation, it is my lifeline to sanity, and it is one way of bridging the communication gap. I look forward to the day when the shackles and chains are unlocked from my throat, my arms, and my legs and in God's eyes I will be able to stand up and be counted as a productive and useful person once again. Uh, 
probably spend forty to eighty thousand dollars a year depending where they're being kept uh, to keep the body in pretty good shape and we buy a three or four hundred dollar TV set and push it in their face and walk away from them for the rest of their lives and that's the only mental stimulation they're able to get uh, and what we're trying to do is to open up uh, the world a little bit for them we're not going to bring them back in to the full swing of society but we we know they can do a lot more than they are doing uh, a stroke victim uh, two months of severe depression paralyzed can't speak uh, eye blink system for yes and no and we get him onto a, a little home computer and suddenly he can write out sentences and and just that you see in three or four days that the color come back into their face and the sparkle come back into their eyes oh it's incredible a tragic reality is that there's a constant need to fit newly disabled people with programs in Canada and the United States, more than 10,000 people sustain spinal cord injuries every year. Many thousands more suffer disabling strokes. The Neil Squire Foundation now has computer comfort programs in centers all across Canada. In the summer of 1985, two volunteers with the foundation, Shana Hornstein and Marnie Abbott, set out across the country to visit each patient and to heighten public awareness of this promising innovation. We have just a few people in every city across Canada working on these programs. It's a long, thin pipeline that we have, and we have to keep in constant contact with these people to make sure that they're doing the right thing and that they're up to date on the technology and they're up to date on our programs. And in this particular case, Shane and Marnie are going completely across the nation, making contact with all our computer comfort programs, uh, bringing the people up to date on what we're doing, and we hope to, to bring a uh, certain amount of public awareness to the fact that we're out there in these communities working in these programs. We've run on optimism from, from the start and we're quite hopeful that the program will continue. A program funded by the National Research Council pays university students like Bill Hamlin to teach disabled people in hospital or at home how to use computers. He says they can gain a lot. It's, it's virtually unlimited, all the the way it can help in controlling your everyday life to give people more control over their lives. 17-year-old Gordon McDowell has cerebral palsy. It's an affliction which attacks the nervous system, and up until he was introduced to the computer, communicating was difficult. But through a program established by the Neil Squire Foundation in Vancouver, Gordon at the Frank Eliason Center in Saskatoon and others across Canada are now reaching a world which before was almost beyond grasp. People are going back and, and running their own small businesses, communicating, writing letters to friends for the very first time, having not been able to do that without another person knowing what's the content of that letter. Once they can do something for themselves and show other people that they can do it for themselves, it just gives them a different outlook. She wants to become an independent legal secretary. In the past, the very idea was a cruel dream, but not anymore. With the program and her determination, she has a chance. Bob Gillingham, CBC News, at Pearson Hospital. Now to do this one, to do that on this board, there's a little picture of a handy bus. Computer science students like Kingsley are the teachers. And many have designed programs like the one Cliff is using, an enlarged keyboard on the screen easier for him to see. Because of tremors, Cliff can only control his hand movement up and down. But with modifications, he can use a computer. It will help me get a job. And it, and it helps you to communicate. People are able to communicate. Some people are non-vocal for any of a variety of reasons due to cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, high spinal cord injury, a variety of reasons. And for the first time, perhaps communicate easily as opposed to having somebody guess, was it water that you wanted or was it something else? Locally, Ginger Murray of Thunder Bay, a mathematics major at the University of Waterloo, has been working with six chronic patients over the last four months. Mary Cooch has been disabled by multiple sclerosis and says she can now write letters and cards to friends as well as poetry and has gained a valuable measure of independence and self-esteem with her new writing ability. What is better for the future of these people? In fact, isn't it better for the overall quality of our entire society that we see these disabled with dignity retrieved, communicating, doing as much as they can on their own? 
So, you know, I didn't break, you know, my neck from the neck up. It was from the neck, from the neck down. We value life so much. We have applauded the medical advances which keep these severely disabled people alive. Now we must enhance their lives with the means that are available to us. Volunteers and students do much of the work of the Neil Squire Foundation. The National Research Council of Canada has helped get the project started. But these disabled people still need your help for their special equipment and the programs. Please help with a contribution to the Neil Squire Foundation, 451-810 West Broadway, Vancouver, British Columbia, V5Z4C9. Special thanks to May Dang, the family of Neil Squire, the Kinsman Rehabilitation Foundation, Kicking Horse Productions, and we would particularly like to thank you for deciding to